In this video, I'm going to try to survive as a single colonist in RimWorld, but I need to earn 100 experience points for every tile I unlock that I step onto. So spawning in with zero experience points in every skill area, would I have what it takes to achieve the following goals? 1. Subsist, and farm or hunt enough food to survive indefinitely. 2. Fend off any raiders that attack my encampment. 3. Build up a safe and habitable base without going stir-crazy. And 4. My ultimate goal. Start researching and open up the way to more advanced RimWorld technologies. This is all based on the Tileman run by SRAM 1337 and Old School RuneScape, then popularized by Settled. The hard part in RimWorld is figuring out what I could do in my limited area to begin with. So I set out on the first day to see what I could accomplish as a solo Tileman. Day 1. I spawned in naked in a drop pod from outer space early in the morning on the 2nd of April, May. Zero experience, but with a few passions to help me earn skills faster. How would I earn XP if I couldn't move around at all to begin with? Since I was stuck in a single soil tile with no resources around me, my only option was to sow crops underneath myself in the cell I was standing in. So from that first crop I sowed, I earned a little experience, a couple tiles in front of me. Now that I could move around a bit, hunger would be my first enemy. I had nothing to eat, and I didn't have the time to wait for the crops I'd sown underneath me to grow. So instead, I used the experience I earned from sowing my first few crops to move a couple tiles north towards some berry bushes. On the way there, I cut down a tree out of the way for more experience with plants. Due to my low plant cutting skill, it would be a small disaster if I failed to harvest the berries in front of me. That would mean I'd lose my first essential meal in the process. So I got some experience with plants and used my first 500 XP, unlocking four tiles to the north and the one beside them to the east to gain access to that first essential berry bush just above me and to the right. But I waited until later to harvest the bushes. By noon, I had over 1500 XP, and I had unlocked 15 tiles around me for more room to keep sowing the crops. With three berry bushes unlocked, food would now be secure, at least in the short term. My next need was shelter, so I started unlocking the tiles inside the ruins of the steel building beside me as I contemplated putting a roof over my head. What else could I do for food? A turkey nearby had wandered into the ruins just beside my unlocked tiles, but being without a weapon, I decided to prepare myself for any hunting or potential encounters with wildlife by using a crafting spot to fashion a wooden club out of some of the wood I had lying around on the tree I had cut down. The turkey got away for now, but next time, I'd be ready. By the end of the night, I'd acquired over 3,000 XP, mostly from sowing plants, and I retired to a sleeping spot near the ruins, hungry, chilly, and exhausted. The first day came to an end. When I rose on the second morning, I enjoyed my first meal of berries from one of the bushes I'd unlocked the day before. I got lucky with my planting skill, and I successfully harvested the berries without botching it. I continued by sowing more crops for more XP, and then in the afternoon, the turkey wandered back toward my tiles. I seized the opportunity to kill it with my club, and I sustained only minor wounds from being scratched by its feet. Fortunately, the combat gave me a whopping 1200 melee experience, and an opportunity to push my medical skills by bandaging. With that, I unlocked and claimed the tiles leading up to the ruined steel structure beside me, where I'd make my way for greater shelter and security next. By the very end of the day, I was exhausted, slightly malnourished, and ready for bed. But not before I deconstructed some more of the ruin walls and placed my sleeping spot inside of them. Just before midnight, I managed one last successful berry harvest, but it gave me food poisoning from the raw ingredients. I'd spend the next day nauseous as I stumbled around slowly. So the second day ended, with 59 tiles unlocked. On the third day, I did a little construction on the ruins, then I pathed my way down to some full-grown trees just to the south to harvest them for wood so that I could add a door and wall and roof myself in for the next night. I passed 10,000 XP and 100 tiles unlocked. Thankfully, all the experience I'd gained snowballed, and then it let me unlock even more tiles farther to the south in a cluster of berry bushes to secure enough food to get me through the first rice harvest in a few days' time. As the third day drew to a close, I began to recover from the food poisoning, and now I could finally sleep with a roof overhead. So ended the third day. At dawn on the fourth day, I built a fire from the trees I had downed. A squirrel went rabid and attacked me. Not much of a danger, but a meal to prepare next. Again, I sustained minor wounds, but I was victorious with my club, and then I rested. Then I ended the fourth day by skinning the corpses of the turkey and the squirrel to add meat to my ingredients. 160 tiles unlocked, and I allocated them toward accessing the rest of the ground in my makeshift hovel. The fifth day arrived, and I filled out more nearby tiles for agriculture. More basic work. In the afternoon on the sixth day, a raider from a nearby faction came to rob me, so I prepared a few spike traps in my doorway but I couldn't lure him in fast enough to prevent him from setting fire to my crops and destroying much of my food supply. Thankfully, I escaped unscathed and the rains extinguished the worst of the flames. 
I stripped him for his gear, then I rested and rose again the next day for more work. And by the end of the first week, I'd raised over 23,000 experience and unlocked 230 tiles. Now came a great sense of accomplishment. One full week. I'd moved out of my starting square, fought and labored for all my meals, fended off a raider, and made of my home a more pleasant habitation. But there was still more to do. For now, I rested. Now it was time to start expanding to meet my visions beyond my meager start. The eighth day dawned and I gathered more wood. Now I could build a research bench, but I had a lot more needs to meet before I could use it to research batteries and establish a safe power source to secure my lodgings. So before I did all that, the next task would be to repurpose the nearby ruins into a stockpile zone and get all my materials out of my house. I secured and roofed it late into the evening on the ninth day, and I added a torch to light the way as I could mine out more space for finished goods and resources inside. By the end of the day, I'd unlocked 300 tiles, and I'd eked out my own civilized corner in the wild. I finished the day by building a wooden bed. I started embarking on new projects, like specializing my crop grow zones, and deconstructing more ruins to the south to acquire non-flammable stones and upgrade my house. Another raider approached with a club, but by this time, my defenses were well maintained, and I just walked behind some spike traps in the doorway to avoid conflict. The 13th day ended, and I'd locked more than 400 tiles by now. On the 14th day, I undertook reconstructing my hovel out of granite, but I accidentally triggered a spike trap nearby. Unfortunate, but I bandaged and recovered, and after a short time, I managed to finish the hut in its complete area by the 16th day. Then I built a short trap hallway out front to keep safe and sound. Now I had a lot of experience, nearly 600 tiles worth, so I made space for stone cutting with all the sandstone chunks lying around my encampment. Then I took the cut blocks and used them to tile a neat sandstone floor in my bedroom, all by the light of a torch and I built furniture to make my lodging comfortable and inviting. A few more raiders arrived, but nothing I couldn't handle with my spike traps. I even started making a tally of their gravestones. Four had come for me and failed. That was most of it. Food, defenses, and shelter. But if I wanted power and comfortable lodging, I'd need to upgrade my home with steel. So I allocated my 770 tiles toward pathing southward all the way down toward a rich steel deposit southeast of my base. Now I could specialize the structures of my encampment. A kitchen, a workshop, and add stone shelves to my storage which wouldn't burn in case of a fire. Even little luxuries like chairs for all my workshops. All that I accomplished as raiders fell into my spike traps, helping me spend my time gaining more constructive experience elsewhere. All this culminated in just over 900 tiles unlocked by the 7th of September, a little over two seasons into my expedition. But for all my work, I was still managing without any power source. So I decided next to add power conduits to all the stone walls, now safe from any possible fire that might potentially break out. And then I added lamps in the rooms. But I still needed a power source and I lacked the essential electronic components required for building a wind turbine. So I pathed my way southward toward the only nearby source of components, compacted into the wall of the mountainside, most easily accessible by digging in a straight line southward through a wall of sheer rock with the tiles I had unlocked. When I returned, components in hand, I was able to construct a wind turbine, leading the way to better, more efficient lighting, and enough to keep refueling torches by hand. Workshops, more clothing, now I had stockpiles of extra resources to draw from as the coming winter set in. But still no way to store my power yet. So by the 13th of September, nearly three full seasons into my expedition, I laid out the blueprints for a research room. The culmination of months of effort, all leading to this. An opportunity to think and lay out plans now separate from the world and its pressures at survival. 1,000 tiles, a cluster at and around my base, supported by a branching network of veins that led up to it and made its existence all possible. I completed my research room by the end of September, and by the first day of December, three seasons into my expedition, I finally paved the ground of the fertile tiles beneath me, bringing order to the wilderness beneath my feet and making my compound more optimized and efficient for doing my best work inside of. Seven raider kills, all marked by the gravestones leading up to the entrance. I crafted sculptures to make my bedroom more inviting. I traded wares with traveling merchants who stopped along the way, and I built tool cabinets to raise my efficiency more and more. Next, it was comforts like an indoor heating system, and ultimately it all culminated in clearing out the necessary space and time to begin the real grind, researching technology, batteries where I could back up some power supply for later. Now it came to longer term thinking, the culmination of all my efforts. So, after I completely walled myself in, snug as a bug in the wintry quiet of my shack, I spent those last days of winter and the first days of spring unlocking the remaining tiles within my walls. 
master of my domain. And despite a few raids, by the 9th of April May of the following year, I had finally researched batteries, the symbolic end to my struggles, the automation and advancement of our colony's technology, only for fateful and bad luck to drop me with catching the plague. As a solo colonist with no skill, try as I might after multiple tens with the very best medicine, I simply hadn't acquired the medical skill needed in my first encounters to save myself from this fate. So there I lay on the 11th of April May, succumbing to the cold grasp of death. Only one work left to dig my own grave as I collapsed above the perfectly incomplete gravestone. But it was all somehow a perfectly worthwhile and fitting end to my Sisyphean struggle. Ironical and comical, but a tribute to the futility and the triumph of human progress. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Shout out to the YouTuber One Hunch Man and the Colony XP tab mod by Kibby, who I realized made the challenge just like this after I started making this video. He also did a playthrough of this, so go check that out. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. A major thanks to my patrons who are more attractive than the average person. Until next time.